Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're well. In this video, I'm gonna be showing off light depth again in Luminar Neo, which is coming really soon. They said early November, so I think that we're this close. I know you're excited to have it. I've been reading and interacting with a lot of you in the comments on my previous videos. And uh, honestly, light depth, it's a game changer. It really is. I keep saying this and I keep showing it and I'm hoping I'm getting across my point, which is this tool is unbelievable. It's so useful and so powerful. It really blows me away every time I use it, and it allows me to do things I couldn't really do before, and I'm gonna walk through a little bit of that. The other thing that's really interesting, I think, is it's essentially changing some of my workflow. I'm also gonna talk about that in this video. Let's get into this photo, which is something I captured in Colorado recently. So far, I've already used Develop Raw. You can see I'm on the Edits tab and Develop Raw, so before and after, this is the extent of my edit, right? I brightened the exposure, added contrast, pulled down highlights, lifted shadows, added some sharpening, and then I got to this. And so I was like, okay, great. It's a good starting point. Now, if you've been here before and watched my previous videos, you know I always, always jump into super contrast as tool number two. And that hasn't changed, but uh, on this video or on this photo, I should say it did change. And so that's one of the things about my workflow that I'm still experimenting with. I I've only had this tool for a couple of weeks, so I'm still kind of getting to know it, right? We're still in the dating phase, if you will. Uh, all I'm trying to do is figure out where does it fit because it does so much and it's so useful. It's replacing things that I used to do that were either harder to do or I couldn't even do, uh, and it's certainly saving me time. And so depending on the photo, it's either number two after Develop Raw or number three after Develop Raw and Super Contrast. It will depend on the photo, but in this video, I'm gonna go straight into light depth after develop raw. And so what I wanna do here is two things really. I'm gonna use it twice. And that's the other thing you can do is just because you can use these tools multiple times, it just comes in so handy. So I'm gonna start and I ended up going to about a 25 or 26. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna brighten up a little bit of that gate, uh, the gate, the, the stonework and this woodwork here that's kind of framing it. And so that's where light depth comes in. So I'm gonna pull this up. I need to broaden this a little bit. And you, you, honestly, you just start moving around until you find the depth that works. And I think it's, uh, yeah, it's actually this way. Uh, look at that. I mean, you can see here in this graphic just how perfectly it is grabbing that because it's in the foreground. So it's lighting up based on depth. And so I'm currently in the foreground because I'm really low here. Now I added some softness as well, which is gonna give me a little bit of a feathering. And I also added a little bit of warmth, which I like about this tool a lot because I do want to add a little bit of warmth to that stonework and that fencing. So if you take a look at that before and after, right, before and after it works really well. Now, you'll see the advanced settings down here below. It defaults to the negative 50 for near and far brightness. I'm going to leave it. I think it works here. So before and after. But there's another thing that I want to do, and that use of light depth was absolutely perfect. And if you think about how you would have to do that in the past, you would painstakingly brush it in, or you can also use an object mask, but you would have to grab lots of different objects and it would just take a lot longer. So this is a time save saver and it's making it much, much easier. But it's also letting me do things, as I said, that I couldn't really do before. So this use of it, I went to 17 and what I wanna do is place a little bit of light past the gate on that road, right? And prior to having this tool, I, I don't really know how you can do that very well. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag this and I need to experiment. I need to broaden this a little bit. And what I wanna do is just start pushing this light down that road a little bit. And you can kind of see what's happening here. I've gotten past that gate and I'm further into that road. Now, what I do wanna do is pull these back to zero on the advanced settings because I don't wanna do that twice, right? So I'm gonna leave that at zero. And the light now is just going into that area. I'm gonna do some softening as well, which is like a 23, that looks good. And I'm not gonna to touch the warmth. So if you look at the before and the after, right? It's lightening up that land back here in the row, but it's also getting some of the land to the left and some of that land to the right. So before and after. Also notice it's getting some of the land in between these slats. And so that's why I'm saying you couldn't really do this stuff before. I mean, you could with a brush, but you couldn't do it easily. You certainly couldn't do it quickly. And this was, if I wasn't sitting here yapping about it, this was a, I don't know, 10 seconds of work to stick the light on that road and give it a nice little balance. And that's what I'm loving about light depth. And that's why I'm using it so much and why it's replacing things like dodge and burn. And it replaces 
the need to do a lot of masking for the light. You don't get off that easy. You still got to learn masking. I still am going to talk about masking and do it all the time, including in this video. But um, it's important, but you don't have to do it as much for light. And so that's something that I would often do is go in and do my initial uh, develop raw super contrast. And then I come back with develop with a mask for light somewhere and then develop again with a mask for somewhere else. And so I did that so much. Uh, but now I'm coming back and using super contrast because it gives me the ability to impact this light on a global basis, which really helps kind of, um, I don't know, frame it up. I don't know what the word is. It just kind of gives a nice overall look to the image coming back and kind of using this, well, not kind of, using this as a global contrast adjustment just with varying amounts uh, depending on the light zone or uh, light uh, section that you're in between highlights, midtones, and uh, shadows. So it's kind of hard for me to make these moves and do it, uh, do the moves and talk about it at the same time. But if you look at the before and the after, right? Before and after, I think Super Contrast did a great job of complementing what I did twice with light depth already, plus, of course, my basic moves in Develop Raw. So before and after. And so that's one of the ways I'm finding that it's changing my editing is because it's letting me come in and save a lot of time, impact the light in a really positive way, in a really powerful way, uh, and also in a much, much quicker way. So I love that. Now, I'm not done with this. I want to go in and do a few things. I am going to use object mass because I love them. I'm going to grab that. I want to grab these things. What I want to do is just highlight a lot of the th stuff here and come in and uh, there we go. Get that, get that. And I want to get some of these posts as well. And I want to come in and, oops, not that one. There we go. Pull that out. Stick this in here. And all I want to do is uh, accentuate this a little bit with some structure. There we go. And uh, just a little positive increase in structure. So, you know, maybe 30, 35, something like that. It's giving me the ability to isolate that really quickly. And that's why masking is still important because it, masking is not always about just the light. Light depth, automatic depth mask for light. But other masking tools are great for structure, color, all that kind of stuff. So before and after. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go into the masking menu and I want to grab that mask because once you create it, you can use it and recycle it again and again. So I copied that and I'm going to go into landscape and mask and paste. So if I click show, you can see there it is. And what I want to do is get golden hour and I want to give that a little bit of a bump and warmth. And so all I've done is create a little bit warmer tones in those areas, the fence post, the wall, all that. So before and after. Now, a couple more things I want to do. Structure AI, again, object mask. I'm going to grab the sky and it does a good job. Now, it's not perfect. It missed a couple of spots over here, but you can kind of fill those in if, uh, you know, often you got to come back with a brush. I'm not going to do that level of deep detail in this video, but I just want to smooth it out and soften that sky. Like a negative 50 just makes it nice and soft. So before, and after, and I like that juxtaposition of positive structure, like in the stonework and the wood and the negative structure in the sky. It's just a thing that I like. Uh, and now I want to start to wrap this up with a little bit of a color grade. For me, that's color harmony. So I'm going to do about a 10 or 11 here, but I'm going to do like a negative 22 or 23 in the temperature uh, or the warmth slider. Uh, I'm not going to use split color warmth, but I am going to go into the shadows on color balance. And I want to add a five in the blue. And I'm going to go into the midtones and just do a little bit here. And that's going to be a negative seven actually toward the cyan, which you might think looks a little bit weird. But then I come back and do a negative five on the um, magenta. And it balances out that color nicely. And I like that overall look. I think I've got a nice balance to the colors. So before and after, right? Before and after a nice bit of warmth. Uh, some greens and yellows that are kind of nice and warm, but then also some nice blues that are cooler. Again, I, I do this a lot. I go for that color tension, the warm and the cool, kind of playing them off of each other. Now, the last couple of things I want to do is come in with a mask for light. And I know you, I said that you may not have to do this as much, but there are times when you still need to do things. And I'm going to get a linear gradient, and I'm just going to take this down here in the bottom and really light and really gentle and really low and just slightly darken that to frame it a little bit. So maybe something like that. And you could argue that I probably could have done a little bit more on the negative uh, brightness near in that first use of light depth, but I didn't. Um, and 
I also like to come back at the end and kind of frame things up. So that's just a personal habit, but it works well for me and kind of um, I'm trying to get the viewer going straight into the path because this very bottom section is just kind of uh, empty space that I don't want the eye to linger on too long. And then the other thing I like to do at the end of an edit, and I've talked about this countless times, is going to get Accent AI and a radial gradient and just kind of pop whatever the subject is. And in this case, it's kind of that center section where I'm just kind of drawing some attention. And I'm going to do that with a mask. So again, you still need masks. And I'm going to do like a 35 or something. And that brightens it. It gives a little bit of extra pop. So if you look at the before and the after, right? Before and after just a little extra oomph there, which I think complements what I did with light depth where I added that extra bit of light down there. And that's a whole edit. So if you look at the before, really dark, that sort of thing. Um, and of course, it's a raw file, so it needs work anyway. But brighter, uh, excuse me, darker and kind of flat as... Uh, raw files tend to be. And of course, the after, lots of accentuation to the light, develop raw and super contrast, but light depth twice for two different areas for two different things. And I think it works really well. And as you saw, the ability to place that depth, especially that second one where I was able to place that light down that road, including behind this fence, just saved you so much time and so, so much easier and so much uh, more control, really that I think you're going to love this when you get it. In fact, I know you're going to love it. I'll take that back. I know you're going to love it when you get it because it's just so good. And if you haven't upgraded yet, that link is down below. And I um, hope, uh, hope you enjoy this tool as much as I am. I know you're excited to get it, and it's coming soon. I'll be back soon with more videos. Leave a comment down below if you've got any questions, and uh, I'll be talking to you soon, my friends. Thanks for hanging out, stopping by, and I'll see you soon. Until then, take care and adios.